Hello, my name is Keith Hill, and today I'm going to be demonstrating the basic muting function using our F3 SG global safety light curtain, along with the F3W muting sensors. The first thing we're going to want to do is come up here to the login and select that, and then go to the administrative level. I'm going to enter in four zeros, which are the factory default, and then say OK. I'll give the software a couple seconds, and you'll notice our recovery icon just light lit up. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to set the unit back to factory default. This way we all starting on a fresh page. We'll give it a second. The software will come back saying that the factory default setting was complete. Now we'll come back to the top page and we'll go down to muting override and click on that. All right, within the muting override page, we have a window here that if you are in a teach-in mode, uh, it will show you the number of beams that are actively being blocked or not blocked. While in the manual, you do not get any information from the top screen. You do have the ability to come up here and if you select this, you can go down to 8, and that kind of zooms this page in. Or if you come back out to the full length of the light curtain, you'll notice that it will then show you the full light curtain. You have the ability to come down here and change this axis from number of beams to sensor length in millimeters. In this case, I'll just leave that number of beams. All right, and then also down here, it'll show you the length of the area that you have set up for the muting zone. So the first thing we're going to do is let, make sure that muting is enabled. We will then come down to the muting mode and use this pull down and we'll select exit only muting because we are using the F3W muting sensor. So we do need to show it in the exit only muting. We do have the ability to select this button, and while holding it down, it will show us the settings that we have set for the application. When you release it, it goes back to the normal, so it's almost like a quick view. If you do need to physically make changes to the application, you can come down here and select this, and then it will leave it in this screen until you cl uh, click on close. If you do any type of changes anywhere here or down here, generally speaking, you're better off to click here, check installation position, to verify that the settings that you've entered are correct. Otherwise, it will default it back to what should be correct settings. If you happen to do any type of uh, settings down here and you want to make sure you do have a good application, once you do enter in your values, you can hit evaluate and it'll tell you whether it's a good installation or not. But for this case we're just going to show the basics so we'll close this and go back to our original screen. Now we have the ability to come up here and either do the teaching manually or by teach in. If I select teach in it will show me the amount of light that is being blocked at any particular time on the sensor. But in this case, I'm going to go and demonstrate how it's done in the manual operation. So I'll just have to come back in here. I'll log in using my four zeros and I'll say OK. All right. Now, since I know my object is going to go and um, only block three beams, I have the ability, and I'm only going to be using one zone. So I do have the ability to designate from a chart. So if I do select that, I do have the ability to right click on the red bar here and slide it down to, a little too far, to three beams if I need to. I can, if my object is floating above the beams, I can bring them up to this level as well. So I can either use this to set it or I can use the physical pull downs. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come down here. Oops, I need to uncheck designation. And then I'm going to go and select 
It's going to be starting at beam 1, and I'm going to go up to beam 3. But once you have that set up and you feel comfortable, you're going to want to go and click here to confirm the zone. And you'll notice now our muting zone is only set up for 1, 2, 3. So three beams on the bottom. If you do forget where you are or something got messed up, you can come back here and do recover factory status. But what that does is it goes out, reads the settings right now of the light curtain, and sets this whole page back to what the light curtain is presently set for. So you really don't want to hit that unless you have to. All right, now that we've gone and confirmed the zone, we're really not going to do anything with dynamic. We'll have another video for that, and we're, we're fine with all these settings for now. So we'll just go in and we'll come back to the top of the page. We basically set up the muting. Now, since we did set the light curtain back to factory default, I'm going to have you come in here and click on lamp settings. And if you have the very first firmware revision or your demo says sample on it, you will need to set this back up because we set it back to factory default. If you're unsure, just come in here and verify that it's all set proper. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to make sure that our auxiliary output is set up for muting override information, which it is. Our output pattern is on one time. And we're going to make sure this is set to disable. For our priority one, I'm going to go and use the pull down and I'm going to select safety output information, which is all the way up at the top. I'm going to make sure that this is set for enable and that we have a solid on setting for our output pattern. For priority two, we'll use the pull down and we'll select muting override information. I'll make sure that that is set for disable. And I'll use our output pattern pull down to select on one time. For our priority three, I'm going to use the safety output information, which was all the way up at the top. I'll make sure it's disabled. And our output pattern is solid on. Okay, now that we've got everything set up for the light curtain, we can come up to here and we'll do a write configuration and we will write the information to the light curtain. All right, now we'll come back to the top of the page. We'll select monitor. In Alaska, it says it okay to set the light curtain back to the monitoring mode. We'll say okay. We'll give it a second and then I'll set it up into the monitoring mode so that when we go live and I'll click start here to start monitoring so that when we go live you can see what's physically going on. So that ends up the software demonstration portion of this video. Now that we've gone and downloaded the settings to the light curtain I'll demonstrate how the basic muting works. Presently, I have two objects here, one that's a little bit taller, which should uh, cut our three beams, which we had set up as a, uh, the, our zone. And then we also, if you remember, when we set up the software, we allowed one beam as an allowable beam. This product here is one beam less than what this is. So both items should pass through without any issues because we did give that one beam allowable beam. So as I go and I pass through, you'll notice I'll come through, I'll break sensor A, sensor B, I'll get my muting indication, and it will allow me to pass the item through with no problem. Now if I take that same object, send it on through, I'm starting my muting process, but if I stick my hand in here, then it caught it because I'm going greater than what the allowable beam or the actual zone was set for. Okay, so now if I come and take the smaller one and I pass it on through, I do get my muting indication. You'll notice on the software only two beams were blocked and everything was okay. So that's because of the one allowable beam. So that ends the demonstration of our basic 
muting capabilities with our F3 SG safety light curtain along with our F3W muting sensors. Thank you very much for your time and have yourself a great day.